What's going on, everybody? We wanted to give you a behind-the-scenes look at some work that we released just last week. First, because I think it's pretty cool and it's interesting how we made it, but the biggest reason is why this is the first time that we've used Photoshop's generative AI to be able to actually create real work that's gone out the door. And the other thing we wanted to share is we learned a pretty cool trick that is simple and powerful, but not very intuitive about how you can create depth and shape using generative fill. Let's get into it. So the project we want to talk about is a teaser campaign that we did for our client Black & Whiskey. Now Blackened is owned by the guys at Metallica, who a few weeks ago put out their new album, 72 Seasons. So to go along with that, Blackened created the Blackened 72 Seasons Batch. Well, the reason why it's a 72 Seasons Batch is that we created a technology called Sonic Enhancement, where we actually play the music from the album into the barrels and it releases more flavor into the whiskey. So we wanted to promote this. I'm just talking to the client and they said, hey, it would be really cool if what we could do would be to create our version of what you see on the album art. Now, 72 Seasons refers to your first 18 years of life. And so as a result, the album art has this charred crib and melted objects. So how do we create our version of that? Well, when your brand name is Blackened, you want to be able to create a charred and burned version of this bottle. So normally we would go into, we could 3D model it, we could go into ZBrush and create the texture, but we wanted to try something different and use Photoshop's generative fill. So that's what we did. Now we started in a more traditional way, as you can see here, where we just went through and we worked through a bunch of different layouts. We tried different textures. We just tried to create, and it's this sort of flat burnt wood look, but it, it got the idea. And we showed it to the client, we showed it to the band and their people, and they said, great, we really like this. Well, the challenge then became, how do we make this look more dimensional? How do we make it look more real? Because yeah, you get the idea, but whenever it's flat and it looks like this, it's not quite as compelling. So this is where we figured out that we could do a really interesting trick with Photoshop's generative AI. Now, what you can do is you can go in and normally you would just be able to select, in this case, the kind of burnt bottle outline that we had created. Well, whenever you do that, you get these results where the AI really only understands sort of one surface and one depth problem so that what comes back looks like it's one solid piece of wood. Well, the problem is that we, we have a different problem here because what I need to be able to do is to tell the AI there's a difference between the neck of the bottle and the body of the bottle because these are on two different depths. So this is where we learn this trick where what you can do is whenever you go in and you want to work with the quick, quick mask feature, the easiest way to know if you're in quick mask is you can either hit the Q key, but also watch if your image turns this sort of shade of pink, because that will let you know that you're in quick mask mode. Well, you can use this mode to communicate to the AI different data around depth. And what you do is by using the different levels of opacity in the mask to be able to do that. So what's gonna happen is that, again, if you go and you knock out the mask completely, so it's just black and white, it's zero and 100%, then it just sort of understands something is all the way in the front or all the way in the back and it'll create a large amount of depth. What happens here though is that you can start to use percentages of this mask to be able to do it. So instead of it being at 100% knockout, if I make the, bot the body of the bottle, so this part at 100%, and then I make the neck at 80, what's now going to understand, okay, this part is in front of this part. So that just by the difference in that mask data, now the AI starts to understand that there is a bit of a depth difference there. So as soon as we did that, you would watch that the AI would start to understand that, oh, I get it, there's a difference here. So you would start to see in the renders that there would be two different levels that would start to create on the bottle. That was great, we started to get better results. But we also have another depth problem to get it really right, which is that this bottle obviously isn't flat, it's round. So the other thing that we would do, then we would go in and thin out the mask on the edges, on the sides here, and this is just taking a brush, and again, turning the hardness all the way down so you have a completely feathered brush, running that down the side. You could also do it with a gradient. But now it understands that there's two different planes to the bottle and that there's a round depth. And just by doing this, 
then we started to get a really realistic, really cool looking version of the bottle that looked like it was charred, burned, in keeping with the name of Blackened. And so it was just that simple little trick, that doing that simple thing of just going in and starting to mess with the mask that let us get very, very different, much more elegant and sophisticated results than what we'd seen before. And so like I said, it's a simple trick, but it really made a big difference. And so then everybody loved that image. They thought it was really cool and it ended up going out to all 10 million Instagram followers that Metallica has. And they actually came back and said, look, we love this so much. Can we actually animate it and use it for an announcement video? So then we had to go back and figure out how to take this image, set it on fire, and we ended up with this video. But like I said, it's just, it's a really cool, simple trick, and it has a lot more power to generative AI than most people think. So anyway, just wanted to give you a look behind the scenes. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button on YouTube because we're going to be making some more videos about how we've done more of this campaign work. And hey, as always, stay crazy.